Right. What is up everyone? Hello there. My name is Steven and I am a first year dental student who's about to be a second year dental student. You know, I got to looking at my channel and I realized that I had never really done any sort of tutorial on the actual lab work that we do here in dental school. So I'm here in the beautiful quad at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center and I'm gonna be taking you inside to lab to show you how I cut a class two preparation on an upper tooth. This is going to be a simple amalgam preparation, but this is gonna be something that you do in your first year. You have to learn how to do it. It's very difficult at first, but I'm gonna show you all the tools that I use and show you some of the tips and tricks that I have to cutting these preps to hopefully as close as possible to perfection. So that should be it for this intro. I will see you in the lab. So we have a practical at the end of the semester to cut this prep. It's a makeup prep from a, basically a practical that got canceled. And so I'm gonna show you all of the things that you need. It's pretty simple. And then I'm gonna show you just like the basic process of how to cut this prep. All right, so here is your basic list of items. We've got typodonts here. Unfortunately, I don't have a metal base for this one. So I'm just gonna have to have one typodont in today. I uh, loaded up with a new number three right there. Got a couple extra number threes just in case we mess up. And then for the instruments, mirror obviously, because we're working up top, a hatchet is really important to get clearance in all of your uh, locations, buckle, lingual, and gingival. Uh, this is a larger hatchet. Then you've got a couple of gingival margin trimmers right here. And then a perio probe just to measure some depths and distances. And then the burr block here, we're gonna be using a couple of burrs, mostly 330, and then also the 245 for the box portion, and then if you need to a little bit extra squareness, you can use a 56. So that's also another burr that I would recommend. And of course, high speed handpiece set to its highest speed. And we will get on this. Go ahead and draw in my outline form here, and you can see what I'm gonna be doing. So this is number, number three, of course. The occlusal portion of the tooth is pretty simple, just riding up into the buckle groove just a little bit. And then we're gonna have an easy transition straight on the lingual all the way out, and then a little bit of an S curve on the buckle. So we want 90 degree exit angles, of course. I'm gonna start with the occlusal surface and work my way out to the box portion, and then I'll show you how I do that. Very simple outline form. I'm not using a rubber dam, I'm just gonna do it straight up. So now I will set up, show you my posture and how I approach the patient. It's true. the initial cut. Okay, so it was at this point in my filming in lab when I realized I was being incredibly awkward and strange as I was filming. And the reason for that was that I was one of like three or four people in the entire lab and everything that I was saying could be heard by all of the people that were around me. And I felt like they were trying to be quiet because they knew I was filming and it was just kind of awkward. So <laughs> I wanted to stop uh, talking in the lab and do a bit of a voiceover and an explanation of everything from here on out from my desk at home. So shout out to my classmates for dealing with me constantly doing the vlogging stuff. I know it's strange, but from the comfort of my own home, I'm now gonna walk you through the rest of the prep from here on out. What you're essentially looking at in this clip is the rough outline form of this prep finished up. Now it looks pretty rough because it is, it's not at all finished up. It's not contoured correctly. It's not uh, finished in, in, in the final finish that I'll be going for, but it's essentially a 1.5 ish deep prep throughout that's defined the entire um, external margins of the prep. Now you can do it this way and go ahead and cut the entire 
margin of the prep like what I outlined in black or you can um, do another method where you run essentially out on the lingual go all the way out to your exit point on the lingual and then you can take your 245 burr and essentially establish um, the beginnings of your proximal box with a little bit of an enamel um, covering on the outside so that you can protect the adjacent tooth. So here I opted to go for cutting out the entire occlusal outline first at essentially, like I said, about 1.5 depth, which is essentially the depth of your 330 burr. And then I would, in the next step, go ahead and start to establish my proximal box. So what you see me doing here is going ahead and finally dropping the box, as we say, um, and I'm taking my 245 burr and I'm dropping that proximal box while leaving a tiny sliver of enamel on the most proximal portion just so that I can protect that adjacent tooth number four. This was something that I, I, I didn't always do. It was something that Dr. Stevenson kind of preaches that I really enjoyed. Leave a little bit of enamel protection. It, it acts as sort of a built-in matrix band that you can use to protect your adjacent tooth. And it's really a solid way to make sure that you don't screw anything up. One of the biggest problems that I had before using this method was damaging the adjacent tooth. And now that I do this, I never damage the adjacent tooth. And so essentially what we do is we drop the box, we define the margins of the proximal box as well as we can. We make sure that we take our depth all the way down till we have gingival clearance. That's really, really important. You wanna go far enough down um, to make sure that you can get clearance in the gingival. You of course wanna to continue to establish your buckle and lingual clearance in the same way. Make sure the box is squared off. And then once you've done all of this, you can take your hand instruments and you can start hacking away at that tiny little bit of enamel that you've left. And you'll find that if it's uh, substantially small enough, you can do that quite easily and it'll just break right off. It's here that I wanted to note the posture of the patient. This isn't something that I necessarily talked about. I, I made reference earlier to our position as the operator. We wanna be sitting at roughly the 11 o'clock position if we're right-handed like I am. Um, but the other important thing is the position of the patient. We wanna have the maxillary teeth and the maxillary arch um, oriented so that it's essentially perpendicular with the floor. So if we think about the floor, it's of course sitting um, just like this desk, uh, like just like the floor does like this. What we wanna do is we wanna situate the patient so that their head is back and their maxillary teeth are sitting at a direct 90 degree angle uh, to the floor. Pretty simple. And what that allows us to do is it allows us really solid access, but it also helps us to maintain um, straight angles when we're working. So we can, we can keep the burr in the long axis of the tooth. We can keep all of our angles 90 degrees the way they're supposed to be. And this is just one of those important posture things that you need to make sure you're doing. And of course, keep the patient's arch within your working range so that you can see through the mirror at the tooth. And that's just kind of something you have to play with. Make sure that you have your loops um, fit to where your working distance is correct and you should be able to do that. So now you can see me working with my hand instruments, specifically my enamel hatchet to break away that a little enamel wall that I left. Um, this is kind of a satisfying process to finally break that thing away and to see the pretty much final margins of your prep as you've created them. I will say that the posture of this is actually something that I haven't fully figured out yet. It's kind of strange to have uh, the correct posture and the correct and the correct grip, I guess, on the instrument as you're doing this. I think that there's probably a different enamel hatchet that situates the blade at like a 45 degree angle, whereas this one is just straight across with the handle, but it makes it kind of difficult to do it seated like I am here in indirect vision, but essentially just mess with it and figure out what is most comfortable for you in order to break away um, what I like to do is attack the buckle and lingual portions of this enamel wall that I've left, and you'll see it just kind of break away. And I'll also take the hatchet, go down to the bottom where the gingival clearance will be, and I'll just kind of rotate it up into that enamel wall, and it'll snap it away. And you can see the result of my labor here as this is kind of the first look at the prep with that uh, pesky enamel wall broken off. The, the Of course, the margins aren't clean at all. That gingival margin specifically is really messy, really gritty looking, but you can see that I do have gingival clearance, which is really important. And you can also see that I have um, pretty solid buckle and lingual clearance as we sit right now. And of course, um, you can't really tell from this image, but 
there is absolutely zero damage to tooth number four, which is extremely, extremely important. I didn't mention this so far, but when we have our practicals for these teeth, if we have significant um, adjacent tooth damage, it is an instant failure. So you can have an absolutely flawless prep, but if you have enough damage to the adjacent tooth, and trust me, it's very easy to damage the adjacent tooth, um, you're gonna have an immediate and full failure of the practical and you'll have to remediate. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And this enamel wall method is really effective in preventing that from happening. So the final step of this entire preparation process is the finishing of the prep. We wanna go in with a slower speed than that high speed and essentially smooth out all of the prep, all of the margins, of course, both the pulpal and gingival floors, all of the walls, both proximal and occlusal. Um, we just want to hit everything with this slow speed. As you saw, we have electric hand pieces in our lab, slightly different than an air driven hand piece. And I'm going to take that down to red 10, which is, I don't remember how many RPMs that is, but it's half of the total uh, full high speed amount, which I think is like four, 400,000. 40,000, 400,000 RPMs, somewhere like in that. It's, it's half of the total amount of RPMs that you can have on the handpiece. And I'm just gonna go throughout the entire prep and smooth everything out, try to make it as smooth and as pretty as possible. This is kind of difficult to do when you're working in indirect vision, unless you're really proficient with indirect vision. I am obviously not yet, but what you wanna do is just try to go slow with this process, try to have really light pressure on the tooth and just smooth out all of your walls and the floors. I promise these little details will really make a difference when it comes to grading. And as you can see from the image here, the prep looks pretty good, looks pretty solid. Um, you can see the, for example, the gingival clearance is very clean. It's a sharp line of enamel now. It's not all fuzzy and, and grindy like it was when I first created it um, because it's all been smoothed away. So you can do this with both the handpiece and also hand instruments to just make everything nice and smooth and flat. This prep is far from perfect. It's actually the first number three MO prep that I had cut in a long time and that's not a, an excuse, but I am not great at this yet. I'm just a, uh, very end of my first year of dental school, so I'm still very new to this, but I thought this would help you kind of get the perspective of a first year dental student and what are some of the things that I think about as I'm trying to learn how to cut these preps with you. Some things that I would fix with this prep, I think the lingual portion of this prep is okay. Um, I, I see some slight waves in my lingual wall running from essentially the middle of the tooth out to the lingual exit point. Um, so I might try to smooth that a little bit more. And then the buckle portion of the tooth, I think it might get ever so slightly too wide in the isthmus of the prep, which is that middle portion of the prep where we transfer from the middle of the tooth out to the proximal portion of the tooth. And also there isn't a great definition of what we would call the S-curve. Um, it's sort of gradual, which you can do, um, but as far as the ideal amalgam preparation goes, you wanna have a really nice S curve that that takes you into a 90 degree exit angle there on the buckle wall. And that's not necessarily perfect either. I also might try to get a tiny bit more buckle clearance on this one. I think my exit angle is slightly acute, so it's a little bit less than 90 degrees and it's not exactly perfect, but I do have buckle lingual and especially gingival clearance. The gingival clearance here is really nice. And I think the axial wall is in a good position. Perhaps it could be a little bit uh, flatter, a little bit less curved, but it's overall in a good position, which I like as well. So like I said, I don't think this prep is perfect. It's not a Stevenson level prep, but it is uh, something that you may expect to see from a first year dental student. Um, and it's a passable prep, I would say. So that's usually what I go for, just try to pass and, and get through. If you would like to have A level preps every single time, you of course need to check out Dr. Stevenson here on YouTube. He is the operative master and his preps are incredible. Um, I, at one point, in my first year of dental school was watching his videos just out of awe and appreciation for his work uh, because he really does a good job and he walks you through every single step showing you better camera angles than I did here in this video. I just thought it would be cool and interesting to show you kind of what I go through when I cut a prep like this. Uh, this is, in my opinion, 
probably the most difficult prep that we've had to cut this year just because working up in the maxilla is inherently difficult. Um, it's a lot more difficult than working with direct vision and working on the flat surface that is the mandible. Um, so it's definitely been more difficult for me to come by, but this was the prep that I was cutting at that time. And so this is the prep that I decided to make the video for. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Plenty of new content coming out in the very, very near future. I'm super, super happy and excited to be back from my little YouTube hiatus, which only lasted a couple of weeks. I was itching to get back the entire time, I promise you that. And I'm pumped for this summer because there's gonna be a ton of fun content coming out for all of you to hopefully enjoy. So as I always say, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.